I mean, you also mentioned fasting potentially through this uh, two-day thing. It'd be cool to get your thoughts about fasting in general. Do you think uh, on a personal level and at a higher sort of level of studies that you're aware of and physiology and so on, what do you think about intermittent fasting of like not eating for 16 hours and then having an eight hour window or something I've been doing a lot recently, which is eating only once a day. So that's 24 hour fast, I guess, one meal a day or something I've um, been thinking about doing, haven't done yet of doing like 72 hours or some people do like f five day fasts in general. So this would be for this particular run would be a uh, 48 hour fast if I don't eat at all. Uh, what do you think about that for performance, for m mood, for all those kinds of things? I can speak a little bit to the science and a little bit of my own experience and then some anecdotes of people that have done very hard, very long duration things and what they've told me. So I just want to make sure I'm separating those out so people know my sourcing. I think now none of this is about the actual long-term nutritional benefits of one thing or the other. But if you look at the science on intermittent fasting, it's pretty remarkable. Before I was at Stanford, my lab was in San Diego. One of my colleagues was Sachin Panda at the Salk, is phenomenal biologist and researcher, wrote a book called The Circadian Code. It's very, very good and, and kind of popularized intermittent fasting, although there were others that had um, talked about this before. Ori Hoffmeckler talked about the warrior diet. People mm -hmm. probably don't, might not know who Ori is, but he's he's sort of the originator of the this business of intermittent fasting, eating once a day or limited. Anyway, Sachin has published papers, peer reviewed papers in very good journals like Cell and elsewhere, showing that limiting the consumption of calories to eight, you know, four, six or eight, or even 10 hours of every 24 hour cycle and keeping that more or less correlated with the light with when the sun is out mm -hmm. leads to less liver disease improved metabolic markers, less body fat, et cetera. It, it, in the mouse studies, they even gave the mice the choice to eat whatever they wanted, as much as they wanted, as long as they restricted it to a certain period mm. within the 24 hour cycle, they they did great. They, they maintained a healthy weight or even lost weight. When they took the same amount of food and they stretched it out across the 24, the entire 24 hour cycle, so this is eating every hour or two hours, the animals got fat and sick. So it's pretty remarkable data. How much of that translates to humans isn't clear, but one thing that's really clear with humans is adherence, right? We could talk a lot about nutrition and some of the problems with the studies on nutrition is that what people will do in a laboratory is often hard to do in the real world. Low carbohydrate diets, just they tend, because they tend to focus on foods that have high amino acid content like meats, generally people are less hungry on their those than they are on calorie matched diets of fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates, because when the insulin goes up, you get hungry and you want to eat more. Mm -hmm. So this is not a push for carnivore or a push against one thing or the other. It's just, there are a lot of factors, but we know for sure that when you're fasted or when you have low amounts of carbohydrate in your system, complex carbohydrate, your alertness is going to go up. Fast increases, increases alertness and epinephrine for the sole purpose of getting you to go out and find food. Can you imagine if our ancestors got hungry and they were like, oh, I'm too tired to go find food. We wouldn't be here. It'd be like robots or some one of your alien, one of your alien buddies will be like running the planet. Dream. So I think that um, if you want to be alert, fasting or keeping carb complex carbohydrates to a minimum is very valuable. If you wanna sleep and you wanna be sleepy, ingesting foods that have a lot of tryptophan, which is the precursor to serotonin, so complex carbohydrates like rice and grains, turkey, white meats, those things do create a sense of sleepiness. However, there is a caveat, and this is one problem with the once a meal, once a day meal, is that anytime you have a lot of food in the gut, you're increasing sleepiness because you're diverting blood to the gut. It's gonna trigger the vagus to, signal to the brain to shut down your system and utilize those nutrients, can, you know, digest and utilize those nutrients. So I've done the once a day eating thing. The problem is I eat so much in that meal that I'm exhausted. And so it doesn't always lend itself well to the schedule. But so in a six or eight hour eating block for me is a little bit better. Mm -hmm. 
I do eat carbohydrates. I'm probably one of the few people left on the West Coast that actually consumes carbohydrates and will say know, that out I loud. I don't know people eat carbs anymore. That's weird. <laughs> they don't. Where do you even find carbs? Where do you buy it? Yeah. <laughs> I like oatmeal. I like rice. The, the other time is if people are doing very high intensity weight training, they need to replenish glycogen. Yeah. On the alertness side, I, I do feel like it's probably person dependent. For me, alertness, being alert makes my life better in a lot of ways more than just the alertness itself. Like for example, one of the things I discovered with fasting is that when I was training twice a day in jujitsu, for example, and competing and so on, I performed way better at, at things that you traditionally would say you need carbs for, which is explosive movements and all that. Uh, I don't know if I actually perform better in terms of like the, the force of the explosion <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. the explosiveness. What I do know is the alertness resulted in me uh, doing the technique more precisely. That's the dopamine and epinephrine system in action. And there's a, you know, and there, there are some other just purely uh, physical aspects to one diet versus the other that can be complicated. If you're ingesting carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, you're going to replenish glycogen, which is great, but they also tend to be bulky and fibrous. And I've never rolled jujitsu, but running when you have a lot of bulky fibrous yeah. food in your in your gut or in your intestine, it can be a barrier. It can be uncomfortable. And so some people do really well on low carbohydrate, meat rich diets because they're just not as bloated. They're not carrying as much water and other stuff. Carbohydrate carries a lot of water molecules with it. So there are aspects to being able to train and being really explosive because you feel light. One anecdote that really, um, again, I'm not encouraging any one particular kind of diet, but I have a friend who was in the, uh, in the SEAL teams. Um, I happen to know a number of people in that community. And he told me that he did this very long fast. It was a fast that I think they, you get to eat a little bit of soup and, or broth and there's like a bar or something, but it's like a nine day thing. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's a very strong athlete. And he said that on day six or seven, he was running up some hills or something while he was on deployment. And he felt amazing. He had kind of hit this other level. He was somebody who had boxed in the Naval Academy. He was somebody who was, had, he knew, knows and knew high output. And he felt like he discovered the, the 13th floor, that there was another floor to this performance space that he hadn't experienced except while he had fasted. And he said that that was a remarkable clarity of mind, energy. It's a little bit of what you described. Mm -hmm. he, he described a kind of suppleness and explosiveness. So there's probably Some, something there. On which day? Uh, uh, yeah. at once he was in the fifth or sixth day of the fast. See, see this is the thing is I've never been there uh, on the second, third, fourth, fifth day, that kind of thing. But when I just don't eat for 20 hours, many times through my training, the clarity, it's like, you feel like everyone is moving super slowly mm -hmm. and you're able to like dominate people you weren't able to before. It's like, well, you might have slipped into or, or switched over rather into full ketosis. 